Now we're going to move into systems of inequalities in two variables. So we're going to do two things. We're going to start with how do I graph inequalities in two variables? And then what do I do when I have a system of them? So at least two that I need to satisfy. So when we talk about graphing an inequality, because we have two variables, think of your normal inequalities. You were looking for an interval that satisfied it. But with two variables, I'm looking for a region in the xy plane that satisfies the inequality. So there's a bunch of different x and y points that will make that statement true. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a boundary. And that boundary is going to be found by graphing the corresponding equation. So you replace whatever inequality you sign have by whatever inequality you have by an equality and graph that resulting shape. If you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, in these cases, because you could actually equal that line or that shape, you're going to graph it as a solid line. In the case that you don't have that bar, so you have a strict inequality, you're going to use a dashed or a dotted line to indicate that. What this is going to do is once you draw that shape in there, it's going to split your xy plane into two separate regions. One of those is going to satisfy the inequality. So you want to pick a test point that's not on the boundary line. Then you plug that test point back into your inequality and see, does it satisfy it? If it satisfies the inequality, you shade where that test point is. If it doesn't, then you're going to shade the opposite side because that region doesn't work. It's the same kind of idea when we picked those different intervals and picked a test point within it to see if it worked. So let's start with just some simpler ones simpler in the sense that I only have one inequality. So I want to graph where is x less than negative 2. So the first thing I want to do is I want to graph the corresponding equation, which is x equals negative 2. So remember this, let's see if I can get my xy plane going right, go out 4 in each direction x equals negative 2 is going to be a horizontal line, okay? And because I have a strict inequality, this means I graph this as a dashed or dotted line, okay? So we're going to take our tool and we're going to make it dashed. x equals negative 2 is going to be a vertical line. So you see it split this into two regions. I have this right side and I have this left side. One of them is going to satisfy my inequality. Now really you don't need to use a test point. I can pick all x values that are less than negative 2. So that means I'm going to be able to shade this side over here. These are the values that are going to satisfy my inequality. That being said, you might not always be able to immediately tell which you're going to shape. So I want to pick a test point, and anytime you can pick 0, 0, that's definitely going to be your best bet. So our test point, which I'm just going to use TP as, is 0, 0. So in my inequality, I want to plug in x equals 0 and y equals 0. So plugging in x equals 0, this gives us 0 is less than negative 2. And this definitely does not work. So this means I don't shade in the side with the test point. I'm going to shade in the opposite side. So this is the region that satisfies my inequality. Okay. So our solutions to these linear inequalities are always going to be graphs with some type of region shaded. Let's try another one. Let's do 4y minus 3x is less than or equal to 5. So this one's going to be a solid line because we have that less than or equal to. And what we're going to graph is 4y minus 3x equals 5. 
So to be able to graph this, I gotta put this thing in slope intercept form. So I've gotta get y equals mx plus b. So we go ahead and we add three x to the other side. This gives us four y equals three x plus five. And then we go ahead and divide everything by four. And our line is three fourths x plus five fourths. So our slope, remember, is m. It is three fourths, and this is the rise over the run. And then our y-intercept is b. It is five fourths. So those are the only two things I need to be able to graph that line. So we need to go ahead and get a nice picture going on here. I'm going to go out five in every direction. And again, I know by hand you're not going to be expert graphers. So when you pick a test point, don't pick something super close to where your boundary is because it could be that you graphed it slightly incorrect. Okay. So this one we get to draw as a solid line. So I start by graphing my y-intercept, which is 5 fourths, which is 1.25. So that's right about here. Okay. Now I use my slope, which is 3 fourths. So this tells me I'm going to go up 3. So this would be 1, 2, 3. And then I go to the right 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And another point on this line will be right here. And that's really all I need. Oh, didn't mean to use my eraser tool. That is all I need to go ahead and graph this line. So we connect our two dots, and this is exactly y equals 3 fourths x plus 5 fourths. Okay. So again, I'm either going to shade above or below this. So I'm going to pick my test point. And again, zero, zero is a really nice one. So let's pick that. I want to plug this into my original inequality. So we have 4 times y minus 3 times x needs to be less than or equal to 5. And with this test point, I end up with 0 is less than or equal to 5, which is a true statement. So my test point works. That means I'm going to shade the side that does include my test point. So I'm going to shade below. And so all of this region is going to satisfy our inequality. Again, if the test point didn't work, I would shade the opposite side. Right? But this is all we're going to do for our inequalities when I graph them. Shade the boundary as a solid or dotted line, pick a test point, plug it in, see if it works. So let's try one last one. We're going to graph y as greater than 3x squared plus 2. So because we have a strict inequality, we're going to use a dotted or dashed line again. So let's change our tool to that. And what I want to graph is y equals 3x plus 2. So we've got to bring our knowledge about parabolas in here. i got to go ahead and graph this the best that I can. That 3, remember, is going to be a stretch or shrink. Um, and then that plus 2 tells us we're going to move it up 2. So I'm going to go 5 in each direction, or at least as much as I can. And these ones I can only do 4, and that's okay. And then I don't need to go down too far because that plus 2 tells us to move it up 2. Right? So I know that I would go through the point... 0, 2, and then I have a parabola shape, which means we have something that looks like this. Right? So this is our graph of y equals 3x squared plus 2. And again, I'm either going to shade here above the parabola, or I'm going to shade below it. One of those two regions will satisfy the inequality. From this, I could figure it out. I can pick y values that are bigger than 3x squared plus 2. 
So I'm going to end up shading the values that are bigger than the parabola. But again, if you don't recognize that, pick your test point. And again, 0, 0 works great. So we're going to plug in 0, 0 and see if we get a true statement. So our y is 0, our x is 0, and when I plug this in, I get 0 is greater than 2. So this test point does not work, which means I do not shade this side. So I'm going to shade the opposite piece, which is everything inside of my parabola. Okay. Now when I talk about dealing with an inequality, now I'm just going to have multiple. And again, I'm still looking for a region that satisfies both of my inequalities. So what I want to do in these cases is I'm going to graph the inequality separately, and then I'm going to see where does the shading overlap. So let's do an example. We're going to graph uh, this system of inequalities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preemptively kind of put my three graphs here because I'm going to overlap these two. And I just need to go out four in each direction. So again, I've done this problem already. I know what these graphs look like. And so this is going to be sufficient for what we need. Because I want to make it so that these are exactly the same. So we need to graph each inequality separately. And then we're going to graph a third and final one. Let's see if I can squeeze it in. There we go. We'll just move these over a little bit. Our third and final one will be the full system. Okay. So in my first one, I'm going to graph 6x plus 3y is less than 12. In the second one, we're going to graph y minus 4x is greater than negative 4. And then in the final one, we graph the full system, okay? So in both of my cases, I'm going to have dotted lines, and that's okay. But I need to graph this, or I need to get this in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to kind of manipulate this one a little bit differently. I'm going to get the y by itself first. So this gives us 3y is less than negative 6 plus 12. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 3. And we need to graph y is less than negative 2x plus 4. Okay. So I've basically put it in slope-intercept form to make it a little bit simpler to graph. Because now I know my y-intercept is positive 4 and my slope is negative 2. So this means I go down 2 and over 1 to get another point being right here. Okay. Connecting my two dots gives me my line here. So this is y equals negative 2x plus 4. Okay. And again, I can pick a test point, see if it works. But this tells me I can take y values that are smaller than this line. So we're going to end up shading below it. So this is the region that's going to satisfy this inequality. But again, if you want a test point, plug in 0, 0. If you do that, you would get 0 is less than negative 2 times 0 plus 4, which does indeed work. So this is the correct region to shade. For the second one, same thing. Let's put this in slope-intercept form. Let's add the 4x to the other side. And this gives us y is greater than 4x minus 4. So again, I've got to graph this as a dotted line. My y-intercept is negative 4, and my slope is positive 4. So I go up 4 over 1. And another point on my line is right here at 1, 0. And then because it is a strict inequality, we just go ahead and graph this as dotted. Okay. 
when it comes to figuring out which region to shade, it tells me I can pick Y values that are bigger than this line. So I can pick the stuff above the line. But again, pick a test point. Zero, zero is a good one still. And if I plug that in, I would get zero is greater than four times zero minus four, which is zero is greater than negative four. So this one does indeed work. And I get to shade above or to the left of this line. So when I go to graph my system, I want these to overlap, or I wanna see what region overlaps for them. So if I take this and I move these on top of each other, you see this dark region is what's common to the two lines. So this is going to be the common points for both of them. So I can pick values in this purple region to be able to solve my system. But again, combining that to a single graph, I'm gonna put both of them on the same piece. So for my first line, it goes through four and its slope is negative two. So it goes here for my first line. For the second line, my y-intercept is negative four and my slope is positive four. So it goes through these two points and I pick this line. Okay. I have to shade to the left of this line and I have to shade to the left of this line. So the region that is common to the two that works for both inequalities is this one right here. Okay. I would recommend doing it this way because if you try to graph both of them on the same plane to start, then if you notice, you really have four different regions. So if you pick a test point and it doesn't work, you can't immediately shade somewhere else. You'd have to try each region individually to find the one that works. Okay. Still does the same job though, if you like that approach better, but you're gonna become an expert at just graphing the inequality on its own, so you might as well just do both of them and merge it to one. Okay. Let's try one more, and we're gonna solve this system of inequalities. But now we've got a little bit of a funkier problem. So I'm gonna start by graphing x plus two y is less than or equal to four. And then I'm also going to graph x squared minus one is less than or equal to y. And then we'll graph the full system again. So I'm preemptively going to graph or put my x, y planes here. So again, I can lay one on top of the other to see where they overlap. And I know that I only need to go out four in each direction and I'll be good. So we have three different graphs that we're drawing. So for the first equation, I wanna put in slope intercept form again. So let's go ahead and move the X to the other side. This gives us two Y is less than or equal to negative X plus four. And then we divide everything by two. And this gives us Y is less than or equal to negative one half X plus two. Thankfully here, we get to use solid lines because I have less than or equal. So my y-intercept is positive two and my slope is negative one half. So that tells us to go down one and then over two. And there is another point on our graph. And now connecting the dots, this is the graph of y equals negative one half x plus two. Again, just looking at this equation, I can pick y values that are less than the line. So I'm gonna be able to shade below it. So this is the region that satisfies the first inequality. 
But again, if you like a test point, zero, zero, plug that in. Zero is less than or equal to negative one half times zero plus two, which indeed is a true statement. Zero is less than or equal to two. So that test point does work. For the second one, I get to draw this one as a solid line as well. And what we're drawing is y equals x squared minus 1. So that is a parabola. It goes down 1 because it's x squared minus 1. And then we have our parabola shape for it. And this tells us I can pick y values that are greater than or equal to x squared minus 1. So we're going to be able to shade above this parabola. But again, let's pick a test point. 0, 0 is definitely not on this parabola. So if I plug that in, the 0 squared minus 1 is less than or equal to 0, which tells us negative 1 is less than or equal to 0. So now when I graph the system, when I put both of these on the same graph, there is my parabola. And for my line, it goes through positive 2, has a slope of negative 1 half. And it is also a solid line. I want to figure out which region is common. And so again, this is why it's really messy. You technically have 1, 2, 3, 4, five different regions that you would have to test to see which works. But since we've already graphed each of these individually, I know I have to shade inside the parabola, but below the line. So this is the region common to the two. And again, we can see that if I take my one graph and I plot it over top the other, exactly this region in the middle is their overlap. So let's try one more. We're going to get practice with another shape that we haven't seen too frequently, and we're going to pick a test point now that can't be 0, 0 because of this first line. But we're going to graph three inequalities. We're going to graph y is less than or equal to x. We're going to graph x squared plus y squared is less than 1 and then we will actually get the full system and the solution to the system, all right? So I'm gonna preemptively draw all my pictures again for X and Y. This line looks a little crooked. All right. So I need to go out two in every direction and that will be plenty. And then we're going to have three pictures in total. So there's one, there's two, and there is three. Okay. So for our first equation, we do get to draw this as a solid line. That is the line y equals x. So my y-intercept is 0, and my slope is positive 1. So if you notice here, it goes through 0, 0. So that, unfortunately, isn't going to be a good test point anymore. But this tells me I can pick y values that are less than x. So I pick y values less than this line. So the region that we're going to be able to shade is going to end up being below this line. Okay. But we can also pick a test point of 2, 0. So if I plug that into my equation, my y is 0 and my x is 2, this test point does satisfy that inequality, so I would shade that side. For the second one, we haven't talked a ton about circles, but you have seen them before. This we have to graph as a dashed line, and we graph x squared plus y squared equals 1. So this is a circle that's centered at 0, 0, and the radius of the circle is 1. Okay. And then I have to graph this one as a dotted line. So my center is right here at 0, 0, and my radius is 1, means I go out 1 in every direction. So my circle looks like this. Okay. 
And so this is definitely a little bit harder to see which region we shade, but I can pick points basically inside the circle. But again, let's use a test point of zero, zero. If we plug that in, it gives us zero squared plus zero squared is less than one. And indeed zero is less than one. So I can pick this stuff inside my circle. Now I gotta put both of these on the same graph. So first I'm gonna plot my line, which is y equals x. So it goes through zero, zero and one, one. For my circle, I go through one in each direction. I can shade inside the circle, but underneath the line. So really the overlap is going to be right here. So any point in the shaded region will satisfy both of the inequalities and hence our system. And again, we can see that if I go ahead and I just take this graph and I plop it over top the other, that dark spot is where there is overlap for these two systems.